Welcome to another episode of Small Town Grit. I have, how do you say your last name first? So it's Najinski. Nijinski? Nijinski? No. Najinski. 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 There you go. Najinski. Welcome to another episode of Small Town Grit. I'm your host, Corey Hobbs, and I have the Vaster City Manager with me, Andrew Najinski. 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 Welcome to another episode of Small Town Grit. I'm your host, Corey Hobbs. I have the Vaster City Manager with us, Andrew Najinski. Is that good? That's good. Oh, yes. I <laughs> practice and I practice and I practice on that one. So good thing you're not like a MLB baseball player. I would have not maybe got that right because you your name doesn't sound like it. No, you wouldn't have got it right at all. No. Mm. <laughs> Looks like Ned Zinski. Yeah, long and Polish. I yeah. think they just kind of made it up when they came over. I, I believe that. Yeah. I've heard people taking letters off their name after a while. I, I had a German uh, friend's parents and... They took an S off their end of their name because mm. I got confused with some other family. So yeah, yeah, I'm always my grandmother. Uh, her name they cut, but my my dad's family never got cut. So we're full on Polish last name. It's probably perfectly just so you have trouble saying it. Yeah, that's all right. So I've known you for t- since 2020. I was in your first. Uh, Almost like your first day, I think, or first week, and you came to our board meeting at the DDA. You remember yeah, that? I do remember. Yeah, yeah, Ben. That was back when Ben was taking me around everywhere, and yeah, yeah. It seems like uh, decades ago. Yeah. So it'll be four years in one October. No, I started in March. Oh, you started in March. So you have four. I've yeah, I'm over four. This is your fourth year. Yep, I'm the sixth longing, longest serving city manager that we've had. Yeah, and I always give you a hard time about what. About leaving, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I say. I just say congratulations. You haven't left yet, so yeah, I'm still here. So. Yeah, is yeah. that? Uh, do you feel like that's uh, you know a stepping point? You know, Vassar's always been a stepping point uh, for a lot of people. Is it? Is no, I I don't think it's a stepping point. Mm-hmm. You know, I think uh, I the the community has always been so welcoming to me. You yourself, uh, and my the board, the city council is the most supportive board I could ever ask for. Um, you know, you get times when other communities in the area have been looking, you, know, you get asked, hey, you want to apply? And it's, mm-hmm. you know, I, there's no interest. You know, sometimes more money is not worth, you know, that headache when you have such support. And then on top of that, like my staff, you know, you've mm-hmm. worked with, with all city staff. Yeah. Like, we have a tremendous staff and, if it wasn't for them, there's we couldn't be as successful as we are mm-hmm. um, with all the grant funding that we've received. But so I, I don't see myself leaving. Well, that's uh, good. Yeah. Prior to this, you came from Bay City. Uh, yeah. We talked about St. Stan's and your connection over there in the Polish community. Yeah, on the south end. So, mm-hmm. On the south end, is that what you call it? Yeah. No, uh, all the Polish folks live in the south end. Oh, okay. Yeah. Better watch myself. I got to get like a pass. Like I can come see you before I come to the south side. There you go. I'll make one up for you. Give you my cred. Yeah. So were you on the planning commission or commissioner? I was. On, it was a city. So in Bay City, there are city commissioners like our city council members. Okay. So I was on the elected side. Mm-hmm. So and I worked for a nonprofit. So I wasn't uh, being an elected wasn't my full time job. Uh, but you know, served seven years. That led me to get a master's degree, which led me to go into government rather than nonprofit administration. I see. Okay. At what point do you say, I want to be a city manager? Ah, yeah. You well, because I at one in my thirties, I was like, yeah, I was like, I can, I can do that job. And then now I'm in my forties, I'm like, there's no way that you can pay me enough money to be yeah. city manager. I, you know, I think you, you're similar to me in the respect that like you do a lot of things and that's, mm-hmm. that's what it is. Just being able to balance, you know, 10 different things at the same time. Um, so yeah, I think you'd be successful at it. No problem. But for me, uh, I always thought I was going to go into like elected office, like run for state rep. Mm-hmm. I give uh, uh, representative Beerline a lot of credit for all the work that he does, but I uh, realized when I was an elected that I don't want to be an elected, you know, I think that you can, you can affect more positive change mm-hmm. being, running a government, being the administrator. And I think that we've been able to do that here 
you know, there was uh, some folks that were having difficult times paying bills. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, some of the developments that we've done, they're better off financially. And that's, that's more direct change that Mm -hmm. impacts people's lives. And I like that more than, you know, just saying the good things and not actually doing it. So before we get into what we have going on at Vassar here, so you're married, Mm -hmm. you have two daughters. Yep. So how does that dynamic work? Because I know you do some late hours and kind of different community things going on. So how do you get a balance of, of, you know, personal life and city manager life? Yeah. Well, as you know, I'm, I'm here quite a bit. Um, but you know, it was uh, similar to when I was an elected, I was doing all those late night things and, um, they know my wife's very understanding. It's just part of you know, what, how we're able to feed the families because we you know, mm-hmm. go and stay and do all these things. So, uh, you know, I, I take all my vacation time. I, you know, if I'm here late, I'm going to flex time during the week. So I'm mm-hmm. sure that I get the time with the family and again, fall back on that city council. They're so supportive and, you know, they don't, they don't want me burning myself out here. So yeah. Very lucky to have those folks. Yeah, that's one thing I noticed too. Like uh, Andrea's come in and and helped with the DDA board, and you kind of delegated or seen if anybody else would take some responsibility, so you don't get burned out or overwhelmed yeah. and have a balance. Yeah, so. having her take over the DDA <clears throat> and parks was one of the that was the biggest weight. Mm-hmm. You know, so with her um, when I started, you know, just it's you get bogged down in the daily. Um, so having her do those extra things. Yeah, I've just been made it so I have time to do other stuff, which mm-hmm. yeah, I think we've been able to see. Is it hard to, you know, for me, is it's hard for me to delegate and not have my hands on everything? Is oh, that no. was that hard? No, no. I oh, okay. I, uh, <laughs> uh, I think uh, uh, sometimes uh, maybe staff might get uh, get sick of the delegation, mm-hmm. uh, but I you know I trust in them and empower them. I know that they're going to make the uh, the right decisions. Uh, you know, often, you know, if you see, maybe I shouldn't say this, but uh, uh, my city manager portion in the newsletter, mm-hmm. nine times out of 10, I, that's given me more credit. Uh, 100% of the time, probably. <laughs> Andrea wrote that. Um, yeah. So, and yeah, you know, I don't proof it. I know that whatever she writes is going to uh, be what we want. She's got a very good, positive approach on the mm-hmm. city. and. Um, so it's just, I, I have a lot of trust and faith in my staff. Do you feel, I, well, at least I feel right now, it's, it's just kind of a positive vibe with, uh, businesses and growth and, uh, things that the DDA is doing downtown. Uh, do you kind of feel right now Bastards in a positive growth or vibe? Yeah. Yeah, of course. And we could do with that restaurant and that's, you know, that's the thing we need. But, uh, I just had a meeting with, uh, Tuscola County's economic development director, their new one. Mm-hmm. And, um, got a lot of really good good ideas coming forward, and I think uh, uh, once we can get some more housing here, you know, the restaurant piece could come, and that's you know, we really want to focus on diversifying. Mm-hmm. Think, you know, maybe push out of the, not push out the marijuana industry, but you know, have another bigger employment base. Right, right. Yeah. Speaking of that, so did that come in right when? You came into office there, like that big push. Yeah, so I did not. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't in the conversation when it was getting brought in. Uh, I inherited it. So, uh, but I had when I was on Bay City's board, we brought it in. I was mm-hmm. on the elected side there. And, uh, so yeah, that I took that <laughs> industry from. You know, we just had some maps that mm-hmm. were approved and helped grow it to what it is today. Yeah. And, I, I, Obviously, we get mixed reviews on yeah. on that whole industry. Um, what where do you see it now? From when four years ago or three years ago to maybe another three years from now? Like, yeah, I think uh, you know we definitely had a boom in the beginning, and you know that's kind of retracted. Like you know, at one point, I think most our vacant buildings were rented and had a good lease on with the mm-hmm. marijuana company. Those have all gone away. Um, you know, we have our issues with uh, with some of them, but we're working through those. But as far as the future, I think it'll have just stabilized and kind of whittled down. I don't think uh, we're not going the route of, you know, our neighbors, Vassar Township, where they're approving new ones, you know, all the time. We're smaller industry, I think, will be the better mm-hmm. 
just a part of our our local economy, but not encompassing yeah. of the entire local economy. <clears throat> so I, I can't smell. I don't my I just can't smell. But I I've heard that there's a an odor of. Yeah, yeah. I feel bad for uh, Mike with treads. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty strong over there. Yeah, we're taking that on. Um, we're working with the that developer. We're working with state officials uh, and our attorneys to mm -hmm. force that action. Because when it came down to it, they they our ordinance has not changed from day right. one, and it can't smell like it does. I mean, at the end of the day, you're going to have some kind of smell. Is that correct? Is it kind of like a farm, or or, or are they are they supposed to be a hundred percent? The ordinance says that the smell cannot go beyond the property line. Okay. So uh, the township businesses don't seem to have a problem with this, but mm -hmm. this location does. This location does have a whole lot more plants than any of the township right. businesses. But there is technology that I think um, that they have. I'm no expert in it. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, everybody, <laughs> you, you get calls and people are like, yeah. they should do this. Well, yeah. I'm not an engineer, but... Uh, so we try to piece that together. We've uh, showed them best practices from other places mm -hmm. in the industry and talked to other municipal managers that have the same issue. We're kind of all looking at similar yeah, yeah, yeah. solutions. I, I'm sure that's probably your number one call in the office, or maybe not. I don't even know. Probably right now it's probably the uh, the water project, maybe. I don't. Yeah, the water project's taking a lot of calls. and um, But, yeah, we, we do get some... Um, calls about the marijuana order but it's gone down they have done some stuff but i don't think it's it's not enough yeah so. yeah so we i just brought up the water product what, what current projects are going on in vassar what which ones you got through the yeah through the hopper i know you, you guys are always trying for apply for grants and yeah so we've received over 16 million since i've been here it's amazing in grant funding yeah. so the water project being one of them so we're we're in it. It's very disruptive, as uh, folks in the community can see. Uh, but you know, Cooper Excavating is tearing through, and they're um, uh, you know they're, they're installing it faster than anticipated. So mm -hmm. that's been really uh, really wonderful. So other than that, we have our public safety project. Um, that's a six million dollar uh, direct federal appropriation from Congresswoman McLean's office. So that we're about to close on some land, and then we'll do groundbreaking, all that fun stuff. That's uh, exciting. It's very exciting. Yeah. So what's the goal with that project? Like, are you trying to bring you the police and everything? So, so what's the... So the, the goal will be, uh, we'll, we're, we originally wrote it to put police and fire one new building. Mm -hmm. uh, the fire hall, currently we have to order our truck small. To fit in that tiny mm -hmm. building. So it costs us more money. Uh, the police department, I wouldn't want to back up their vehicles into that little garage at City Hall. <laughs> they do it very carefully. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how we haven't lost more mirrors. <clears throat> um, but uh, so it'll get them out and it'll have a command center that's not in the floodplain. I mean, that's kind of the bigger uh, thing. And then um, the other piece to that, if costs allow it, we're going to move City Hall into it. Okay. So it'll be a complete municipal complex um, to house fire, police, and city. nice, nice. That's exciting. When's the projected project for that? Is that this year? Is that a 2025 project? Oh, my goal is to get it going as soon as possible. <laughs> so uh, the you know, realistically, we're probably two years out from being able to to be moved in. That my goal is to be done in two years. I okay. Want, I want ribbon cutting then. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like you're still going to be around. Yeah, that's the plan, man. <laughs> yeah. That's what, uh, Chief Kyle says the same thing. He's like, I love that you're, um, that you have all these projects in the hopper because it means that you're just going to keep mm -hmm. seeing them through. But, yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, uh, is, is there one project right now that you can say, like, since I've been here, like, this is, this is like, this is my defining moment as, Oh, city manager it's taco bell taco bell <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've been here 21 years and i think that was the first thing i've seen like where's when's taco bell coming i know well, yeah, yeah that's my legacy is yeah. that it doesn't, it doesn't matter that we replaced all these water mains or new public safety buildings it's gonna be mm -hmm. a taco bell yep. uh, 
No, you know, I think uh, uh, a lot of the small improvements is what I what I like the most. We, you know, the totems at mm-hmm. T North Pavilion and at City Hall that we've put a playground in every park that has a playground except for T North. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's been significant just quality of life improvements, all the art things throughout the city, and the riverbank cleaning up that riverbank. Yeah, you know, when I started, you couldn't see the river from my office. Now people walk into my office and they're like, this is the best view in the city. Mm-hmm. And it is. So um, I think that those things are, uh, for the community, probably the best. Yeah. Yeah. Opinion. Are you bring the goats back? I just got asked about that today. Did you? The goats are more expensive than they should be. So if you want to buy goats. I do not. Because everybody told me about stories about goats and they eat everything and anything. So they're. You just house them. On no. the riverbank. Just leave them there. And, and the more drain. <laughs> we got uh, plenty. I'll yeah. pass on that whole uh, project. I got enough going on. Yeah. You know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just- Thank you to our sponsors. IRD Homes, mid-Michigan's top contractor, bringing new builds and renovations to life. Timber Oaks. Timber Oaks offers customized lawn and landscape solutions and is a premier mid-Michigan lawn care company. Link Excavation. Your mid-Michigan excavating experts serving Bay, Tuscola, Saginaw, Huron, and Genesee counties. Yeah, so the, those folks, they drive from Milan. They were charging us mileage, and they were charging us hotel rooms. It's too expensive to continually do it. Hotel so. rooms for the goats? For the person. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they have to have somebody that comes and looks at them. Oh, okay. And, yeah, and... And they uh, they were great. I, I loved having them, but it's it's too cost prohibitive to yeah. do every year. You think that's going to be kind of a five year kind of a maintenance project? You know that river bank clearing, or was that just kind of a grant? No, we paid you guys paid out of that. Yeah. So we uh, we sprayed it. So we so you see a little bit of growth this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think uh, the plan is we're going to have cap and come back through and mow it down, then spray it. And then we'll just be on a spray. Oh, okay. And where it won't ever yeah, get that, a chance that to Yeah, because that dramatically changed the whole feel of the downtown with exposure to the river. So. It really did. Yeah. So, you know, my, you know, coming from Bay City, you know, we used the river as an asset there. Mm-hmm. And here it was always like, oh, you know, it's like we don't want to think about the river because it floods. And I just, it's such a, and I think it's a beautiful thing for the community to be able to enjoy. And you see people, those park benches that we put up around, mm-hmm. you see people using those all yeah. the time. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, that's what we need. You know, just place them to go debrief and mm-hmm. enjoy life. Yeah. You've been here three years plus. I mean, what's Vassar's strengths right now? What's their weaknesses? I think the the strength is the the folks that, volunteer and do good things in the community the city and the programming stuff that we do is successful because of all of our you know partners in business or just in the community in general and uh you know anytime that i come and i do this you know a lot (laughs) you know uh my hands out asking for something you know folks they contribute and Mm -hmm. uh that's been uh just a wonderful part of the small town and and you know people they're willing to go out of their way um yeah, as far as weaknesses, I think for at our perspective, uh, the city we we don't the housing is a need. We we need uh, more better housing for people. Uh, and then the next question is, where do we put that? We mm-hmm. don't have city. We own a lot of acreage. We don't have the ability to build on that acreage or right. put quality housing on it. So we we're gonna have to figure that out. So I think the. For me, my approach has been regionalism and work with our neighbors. You know, I don't need to annex something, mm-hmm. you know, to let's you know develop the M15 corridor, whether it's in the city or right. in the townships. Let's you know grow the community as a whole. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, which I know you've been kind of pursuing different avenues to to get water and utilities and services up towards um, Cook dealership and that end of town and yep. kind of. Um, is the same thing happen going the other way as well towards yeah, Millington? Well, is it yeah. kind of open ended on both ends? Yeah, we have sewer that goes out <laughs> of the city on the south end of town, um, but and the township Vassar Township was receptive, but it's just trying to get people to connect, and uh, it all comes out of cost. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not going to make city rate payers pay for expansion into the township, and. Um, so we're looking for grant funding 
working with our elected <laughs> leaders and mm-hmm. things like that. But, yeah. um, you know, when you're successful on getting funding, you know, other ways, and it's, it's a really, we, we want to get it up to cook. I think that would be significant for the development of the top of the hill, but it's just a matter of paying. Yeah. I think our, uh, you know, I'm on the DDA, so I'm going to just to toot our horn a little bit of our board, but it seems like we've uh, really made big improvements on the downtown. Yeah. You know, we have a, a different downtown I always call it professional downtown we're not like frankenmuth or tawas or caseful we're not a tourist attraction yeah. uh, we don't have a lot of eating establishments um it's more of professional services that somebody's coming downtown for mm-hmm. um but i mean we've done concert series i mean I, I won't take credit for it but we've created a space for the concert series um that's more of the street lighting mm-hmm. we don't christmas lights now yeah uh we just finish up that's park um, with the fountain and the monument dedications there, mm-hmm. um, flower pots those yeah. those are beautiful, aren't they? They are beautiful. Yeah, yeah that is a, a very uh, just nice open up for the downtown. Mm-hmm. It just makes it uh, you know before those little petunia beds I think look fine, but those flower pots really make it look a lot nicer. Yeah, I'm sure you still get some calls about the petunias and that whole process, yeah. but I think it's you know. I think a lot of times we're traditionalists and we were so traditional on we've done it this way and, and you know, there's other ways to go about it. And I think this is complements what we've done in the past, uh, bring these flowers downtown. They're easier, easier for us to maintain and, and mm-hmm. make sure that they look good year round. Uh, cause that was a problem when we were on M15, every other lot looked good. Yeah. And well, in, in the, the salt, yeah. Right, the, the soil conditions were just yeah. The soil, the you yeah. know, we're, we're plowing those roads, all that. There's just road debris, dirt, saw all, all mm-hmm. that's getting in there. That it's eroding that soil, and and the flower pots aren't gonna, that's not going to happen <laughs> to them. So right. it'll be better, I think, in the long run. You know, you, you think of the history of the Petunia project, and it used to go city limits to city limits, and then went kind of shrunk and shrunk and shrunk. And for the last four years, it was just kind of the final, the final. Mm-hmm. blow to it and it was a, i think a great thing for the community but just that volunteerism wasn't isn't there anymore so what else you want to talk about what else you got on the hopper well, we uh i just got uh senator peter's office submitted a downtown streetscape uh appropriation request so we're hoping that that passes the federal budget we'll mm-hmm. see but that'll be for um three almost three quarters of a million dollars for um uh, Based on Main Street improvement. Just just in our investor, yeah. or is really yeah. that much? Yeah. yeah. What what's all uh, what's all in that so funding? It would be Wayfair or wayfinding signs, uh, some road improvements to Main Street, and the, the those like uh, safety bollards for the the removable ones mm-hmm. for the summer concert series. Oh, okay. I think there was some water main work into it as well, but mm-hmm. yeah, that's uh, everything not connected to the M Road though. That's the <clears throat> the only. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, MDOT, we originally submitted um, all of uh, Huron in the downtown and all of Maine, but uh, MDOT was like, well, this isn't on our, you know, capital improvement plan. You're subverting. They just, they weren't thrilled with it. So we we <laughs> scoped it down. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we're very excited about that. We'll see. Uh, wasn't expecting to get, uh, you know, two submittals within a, you know, we just got one. Yeah. That's, yeah. So, but it still has to pass committee in Congress mm-hmm. and everything. But that I think will be an exciting thing. So we're gonna have you here in a couple of weeks again. Not here, here, but like in the building for coffee with. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, you are. So when did you start that whole? Oh, we started that. I think a couple of years ago. Now, when we started the water pro- talking about the water projects, so I think mm-hmm. it's probably about two years. It's been, uh, uh, you know, something that I think people like, you know, it gets, uh, I think city hall sometimes is intimidating to folks. Mm-hmm. They don't want to come up and, and, uh, talk with us there. So if I can come to people in a you know, less threatening environment and then also get them to see other businesses. That they yeah. Not that, that's one thing I like you, you kind of move it around different businesses, organizations and get a chance to showcase what they have going on or just a different environment, like you said, that somebody could come and talk. So yeah. Gets- uh, June 25th, right? Is that it? it is June 25th. So <laughs> uh, swear, I, I bet if not, it is it nine to noon 
Eight to noon? Yeah, it's nine, nine to, to noon. noon. Yeah, Andrea Lots puts to talk stuff about. on my calendar. So I, yeah. I, I, I just say, oh, <laughs> that's my day today. So. And there's another thing, too. You got a pretty fairly open policy if somebody needed to come see you at the office. Uh, more likely to be nice to schedule. Uh, yeah, uh, usually <laughs> I hear people talking in the front office. And I just yell, hey, come on in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I think it's important to have that open door for anybody to come in. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, as I said, you, you, you do, you, you pivot from this thing to the next thing to the next thing. So to throw in a random conversation with a resident, that's, that's yeah. important. So you think that's more with small community, like relationships. I mean, we only have, I don't know many people we have in the city here, 2,800, 2,700, 27, 27, 27, 27. Yep. Um, and, uh, so very small community here. So, I mean, you almost have to be that way, right? I mean, tech. Yeah. I don't think even, I think you should be that way. If you're a government leader, you should be that way in any capacity, mm-hmm. but yeah, you know, it should be of have that ability to have the people come to you and voice yeah. their concerns or, um, cause I think sometimes, you know, I think that this might be the right thing, you know, we're like we're going this direction, but maybe it's not. And, mm-hmm. and somebody, you know, coming in and saying, Oh, I have concerns about this. It helps me in my, um, decision-making process. So I went to one of your council meetings. Uh, I don't know. It's been six months or so ago. And, uh, I couldn't believe how fast you got through the meeting. I oh, was we like, get them quick. <laughs> I was like, I was expecting like a two hour meeting no, and but, like big conversations and it wasn't. No. So I continually inform council on everything, you know, if I, whatever I'm doing, they know, um, they know our successes, our failures. So when things come to them on the agenda, they're, they're aware of all of it. So mm-hmm. I think the discussion is simple for them. So how does that work out f- for el- elections? Because, um, you know, you never have the same board, right? I've had pretty much the same board the whole time. Okay. So uh, Council Member McTaggart is the only one that wasn't on the board that hired me. Mm-hmm. We had a resignation in 2020, and Tom ran as a write-in. Mm-hmm. So he's basically been there the whole time. I'd okay. Say six months, maybe. So. Yeah. So you've been kind of spoiled because you got I've the same. Spoiled. Yeah. I've been spoiled. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. One of the things that I did um, after, it was probably after a year, a year into my tenure here, I text Bay City's manager. I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm sorry for how I was on the board. <laughs> uh, just uh, I would not like to have me on the board. You know, the, uh, yeah, I was always you know, questioning little things and, uh, you know, some of, uh, uh, you know, not to say that, that the current council doesn't you know, question me on mm-hmm. things, but they're just more aware of things that are going on because it's that constant communication with them. Yeah. See the shirt I wore today? 175, 175 years. 175 years. Yeah. Yeah. We, got a good, we have an exciting uh, 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 grouping of uh, or, uh, an event on July 24th with our summer concert. Oh, really? Yeah. So we plan on having fireworks, uh, Jedi Mind Trips play. And, mm-hmm. uh, we've got the Land Conservancy is going to give away 175 trees. We'll oh, be doing cool. Like popcorn, a lot of uh, kid event things. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I didn't even know it was 175 years until... I, were you working? Were you working on the logo? Did you work on the logo? Yeah, yeah you did the logo. And I was like, "Where did this come from?" And I was like, "And then I was like, 175 years." And I was at a historical society, and they're like, "You need to buy a t-shirt." I'm like, "Okay." Yeah. <laughs> so t-shirts are at the historical society, twenty dollars. So get get one. The um, yeah, I, yeah, I wasn't on my radar either. I think the historical society brought it up because I was always focused on when we became a city, not necessarily the community's age. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, you know, it's an exciting part of uh, being, uh, you know, it's a milestone for the community and yeah. it's worth celebrating. So let me, let's do some math here. So at 200, will you still be here? 25 more years? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah could be, I mean, I'm gray enough, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see at that okay, point. Okay, all right. Maybe I, I'll be retired. I don't. Know. I don't want to push you out that far. I mean, I'll take. I take a year at a time with you. So, yeah. well, I got. <laughs> I think uh, current. I don't remember how long my contract is. I think I'm through 26 right now. So, yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I always, I, I always joke around with you because yeah. it's like, uh, 
I always felt Vassar was a stepping stone, and I always thought every time we get momentum with the city manager, they took another position somewhere else, whether it's relocating for their family or better opportunity. And it's like, I know you're you're within the the, the parameters of perimeter perimeter for for being on the uh, our city manager, and it's just like we just needed somebody to be invested in our community, and I and I feel like from day one you've been that way and i appreciate that so and I, I think longevity that helps our community as well because you know the residents you know what we're doing you know the programs that we're trying to go for the grants and everything else um do you feel the same way like longevity it, it's good oh, and yeah. bad right yeah. sometimes you get in the groove and be like i'm riding this out but you, i mean you're a go-getter so yeah i just try everything so you know it was the other day I knew a relationship, a community relationship that Sue didn't know. And I was like, man, I've made it. Like, <laughs> uh, like, and this is, a, yeah, I've got, I, I knew something that, uh, you know, 30 plus year resident didn't uh -huh. know. So, yeah, I was proud of that. That's moment. funny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your staff, I mean, that's another thing. I mean, your staff is, uh, Mary's been there for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. I think, she, is she retiring this year? I, she's towards the end of her career, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. And then Sue's been there for, she's been there for quite a so long. I think Sue's been there 10 years, but she worked at the bank prior yeah. to that. So right. she a lot of, knows a lot of folks in the community. And then Andrea has been there for a few years. Yeah. Andrea, I think has been there. I think she was there three or four years before me. So. Okay. And then you just have somebody new in the office. Yep. Like Sarah. Sarah. Yeah. So Sarah is learning treasurer stuff and then also um, kind of have her doing a lot of catch all things with the DPW, mm -hmm. helping Ryan out with a lot of the state has a lot of rules that we have to follow. And yeah. she's uh, very organized. It's nice. That's good. Yeah. And Ryan's Ryan kind of picked up after. Uh, yeah. After Carl. Carl so, left. Yeah. So yeah, Ryan um, has you know, taken whatever I've thrown at him. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think he really wanted to do a $9 million water project, and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. you know, he's, uh, um, you know, his leadership is instrumental in the success of that project. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I, I was like, uh, <clears throat> we're talking about the water project, and I'm like, I see the city guys always involved, whether they're marking or meeting with the guys, and it's like, I don't know if Ryan allocated much that much time that they would be involved in that program no we didn't <laughs> yeah I mean, we didn't expect it to be this much uh city driven mm -hmm. um but it's i think it's just important that we know what's going on the ground that we're holding you know we have a great contractor that's doing the work but mm -hmm. we still want to make sure that you know we don't yeah. have issues down the road and how's scheduling on that or everything on schedule for that project uh yeah two two of the three contracts are are on or, uh, so we have the three different contracts. There's mm. the water main, the well, and then the meters. Okay. The, the well house uh, improvements in the well, and then the water main are all on on track. The meters are a little bit behind. So mm -hmm. just been dealing with that. So side. is everybody get a meter, or is it just no, if you... No. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, it was supposed to be everybody get a meter, but now it's voluntary. So about half the system mm -hmm. uh, is getting meters. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they can get a meter later? They can. Yeah. They can't. Just we won't get 75 cents on every dollar of that cost of that meter like we are now. Mm. So, uh, but we're budgeting uh, coming in the future for water meter installations just through the water fund. Mm -hmm. So it will still be provided to the resident. They're not to pay for it, but we'll, uh, we'll just plan for it accordingly. All right. Well, thanks, Andrew, for being on today. And uh, if they can just come up and see City Hall or call and Get a schedule an appointment or I can just come on up. Very accessible. Come to the coffee hour. Coffee you hour. Drink all your coffee instead yes. of our coffee at City <laughs> Hall. So yeah, anytime. I'm always willing to have a conversation about the community and our direction. And well, great. Well, I appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate our you. community. So looking for you to be around for a few more years. A few more years. Twenty, twenty-five. Twenty-five to more yeah. years. <laughs>